Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative here at Atlanta British. In this video, we're going to touch base on the maintenance that a lot of people neglect on their vehicles, and that's automatic transmission service. On the Land Rover Discoveries, uh, especially Discovery 2, your Range Rover P38, uh, basically any of your vehicles across the board, over a period of time, the fluid breaks down, the filter becomes restricted, and you end up losing not only shift performance because it can affect your fuel economy and it basically affects the overall drivability of the vehicle. So what we've done is we've put a ticket together and this is for the four-speed ZF that was used in the uh, Discovery 2s and in the P38s. This will give you enough fluid, a new gasket, a filter, new O-rings, and the retainer collars for the pan and a drain plug with a new seal. And this is something you actually could do in your driveway. It's a relatively easy pan to drop. There's only six bolts. There's a drain plug. And just doing the service can make a, do a world of good on your vehicle. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to install this. And uh, basically show you how relatively easy it is to do a transmission service on this particular vehicle. We're going to do this on a 99 Discovery 2. Those will be very similar to any of the other vehicles. So follow along. We'll show you how to do it. So before we get started, what I'm going to do is just give you a basic layout of what you'll be getting into. We have a drain plug on the bottom. We're going to take that out first, let the system drain out. And then the only thing you have holding the pan in are six small bolts. You have one in each corner, and then on each side there's one in the middle. Now, the way they have this configured, you have a lip on the pan that goes all the way around. And on that lip is held in place by these little... I guess you could call them a block or a spacer or whatever you want to call it, but the bolt runs through it, as you can see there. Now, when they've been up in place for about 17 years, as in this case, they have a tendency to lock themselves in. So I would suggest as if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you plan on doing this, you may want to start a week ahead of time, just shoot those bolts down about every other day with penetrating oil and let the stuff work its way in. If you're a shop, definitely you still want to be able to get in there and give them a little shock treatment or shoot them up with penetrating oil. You could take a straight punch with a small hammer and just give a wrap or if you have uh, uh, if you have access to compressed air with an air hammer just a quick shot right at the end of each bolt hopefully to break the corrosion loose. So that's essentially what you got. Be very careful these bolts are very susceptible to breaking. It's a very small bolt run into an aluminum housing and when they're there for a while they will lock themselves in place and uh, you won't even know it. You'll spin it out and it'll feel like the bolt's turn and it just snaps right off. So if that's the case, then you're going to be getting into a repair. So you'd be very careful taking them off. Anyway, so let's get started. We're going to take this apart, drop this pan, and uh, get into the filter change. All right, so we got six millimeter Allen drive on a 3 8 drive. I put it on a breaker bar. It gives me a little bit more leverage. And we just crack that loose. Crack it down a little bit. Step back because it's going to pour out of there. And we'll let that drain completely. And as you can see, that fluid, which normally would be a nice bright pink, is uh, got a little brown tint to it. So we'll let that drain, and then we'll uh, start into dropping the six retainer bolts. So now we've carefully removed the six bolts that hold the pan in. Now what I'm going to suggest is what I used was a quarter inch drive ratchet, an eight inch extension, and then an eight millimeter, or excuse me, a ten millimeter swivel head. The reason I went with quarter drive instead of three eighths drive is with a quarter drive you can get a better feel if you're stretching that bolt or not. With a three eighths drive you're more easily to snap that bolt. With a quarter drive you can feel a little better and you can tell whether that bolt is moving or twisting. So we've taken the six down. We're very lucky none of them broke. Uh, we're going to wipe down the surface area where the gasket makes contact. And now for the filter, you've got a bolt here on the pickup tube, and then two bolts here. These are a uh, number 25 Torx, so with the same combination, we'll take that socket off, and with a number 25 Torx, we'll drop these down. Now take into account when you drop this filter, you're going to get some dripping, so you don't want to be directly underneath the transmission. All right. What I want to do is show you while we're in a better view here. This is the new filter that's going to go up underneath. And you'll see that there's a couple areas that get O-rings that come with the kit but are not installed on the filter. So what we're going to do is the large rubber ring goes on the intake side of the filter. And then 
this little small one goes on that neck. So now what we're going to do is we'll set it up in place, put the front bolts in just to hold it, put the pickup tube on, set that in, and then tighten up all three and your filter will be installed. Alright, so we got the filter up in place. The pickup tube is back on. Now the longer bolt holds the pickup tube in and the two shorter bolts are what holds it in front. And to tighten them, just run them in until you actually feel them stop. And then eighth of a turn on a ratchet and that locks it in perfect. They're not going to back out. So now we're looking at the pan. So we're going to do a little prep on the pan. For one, obviously, we're going to take the old gasket off because we're going to use the new one that came with the kit. And inside the pan there's a small magnet. And you can just grab it with your fingers and peel it out there. But you can get an idea of the kind of material that eventually ends up in that filter that can cause a restriction. And this magnet is designed to pick up any of it that has a metallic base to it. And there will always be some. Now if you see chips or chunks, there's an indication you may have something going on in that transmission. If it's just this normal, this black, very fine silt, that's normal. That's just simply off the clutches and whatnot. And what we're going to do is we're going to wash this magnet off, we're going to wipe out the bottom of the pan. And those of you that may be inclined to want to paint the pan or make it look nice, do not paint the pan. Okay, it's just like a radiator. Heat's the biggest enemy of an automatic transmission. When you paint the pan, especially if it's a darker color, it almost acts like a thin layer of insulation so it can retain the heat more than get rid of it. You just want to make sure you clean all the grease and whatnot off the pan before you install it, but don't paint it. Alright, so this is essentially, this is the bolt in the, in the uh, small block, which we've got new blocks, but we're going to reuse the bolts. And what happens is they get enough of that corrosion and whatnot built up in there. These bolts can get pretty tough coming out of there. So if just by pulling them or tapping them you can't get them out, you can set them upside down in a vise, take a long center punch. Don't get impatient with it, just keep working it. And eventually it'll break that stuff loose and you'll be able to drive the bolt out of that sleeve. Something I want to touch base on before we continue, if you look at the little towers or barrels that these bolts run through, you're going to see you got a high and a low. Now there's two that are going to look like this, and these are the two that go in the center. Then you also have the four in the corners, and they're going to have a curve to them, but you're also going to have a high and a low. And the low area is going to make contact with the pan, the high area is going to make contact with the uh, the housing of the transmission and that's for a reason so that you don't over compress the gasket squash it and end up causing a leak so it's not a bad idea but as I explained earlier these bolts will freeze up in there so what I like to do before I put it back together I'm going to put a little dab of grease on the shoulders on these bolts before I put them in the barrels and you can use any grease you can use an axle grease CV joint grease anything that's going to basically maintain underneath and keep this lubricated enough so the next time you go to do your transmission service they're going to come out nice and easy okay so just a tip all right so at this point now like i said we uh, were wiped out the pan now i suggest when you wipe the pan out don't use a paper towel paper towel is going to leave lint and little pieces in there and whatnot you may miss and that's just going to get caught up in the filter kind of defeating the purpose of why you're doing this so what i suggest is go down to your local parts center or whatever pick up some cotton shop rags they do the best job make sure you wipe the pan out clean you're going to wipe off your little magnet and you're going to put it back in the bottom of the pan. And we're going to slide our gasket up and over. Make sure it's seat square all the way around. And it does a pretty good job. It'll sit. It'll sit just right. It fits perfect. And then what we'll essentially do is put the pan back up in place. We've wiped off the gasket surface all the way around on the transmission. And again, you'll see you got your new filter in place. The pickup tube is on. Everything's torqued in. Your new O-rings are on. And it's a lot easier, I find it easiest anyway, to hold the pan up in place, put the two center bolts in first, and that kind of holds it in line, and then you can just run the other four in. And what I suggest is install all six first, leave them loose, and then once they're all in, then tighten them up. All 
All right, so as you saw, we got all six bolts up in place. You're going to just basically run them in until they're snug, and then about a quarter of a turn should tighten them down, and they should get tight. Because remember, you got these blocks in here that act as spacers so that you don't squash it. So they're sort of like auto stops. So don't worry, don't worry about squashing the gasket. That's what they're there for. So last but not least, you're going to clean up this little area on the bottom where your drain plug was. Install your drain plug. Make sure you got your little gasket on there, which is going to seal it. And we'll grab a rag and we'll wipe that all down so that when we fill it we'll know if we've got a leak anywhere. So then you're going to grab an 8 millimeter hex and you're going to take your fill plug out. And remember in the kit you're going to get a new fill plug and a new gasket. So once we take that out, you're probably looking at that going, uh, wondering how are we going to get all that fluid back up in there. So we're going to show you how you can use a suction gun to refill that transmission. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you now how to top off the fluid in your transmission, and then actually if you're just checking your fluid level, you can use the same procedure. Now, we've just done, in this case, we've just uh, replaced the filter in the pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this fill plug out, which is in the front of the pan, towards the bottom. It's going to be an 8 millimeter hex. We're going to do a preliminary fill without the vehicle running. Probably take uh, close to two quarts, or in this case, probably about two and a half liters. And uh, put the plug back in, drop the vehicle down. We're going to start it up, let it warm up, and then once it reaches full operating temperature, we'll put it back up in the air. You want to do this on fairly level ground. We know our lift is relatively level. And while the vehicle is running in park with the emergency brake set, we're going to fill this until we get to a point where the fluid does drip back out at about one drip per second. That actually would be the perfect level for this transmission. So that's essentially the procedure. So we're just going to go through and uh, show you there's really no highlights or tricks to this. It's a very easy to do. All right, and if you're wondering how to get the fluid up in that little hole, this is considered, this is called a suction gun. And you can buy basically buy these at any automotive center anywhere, including Walmart, Kmart, or whatever you have. But they are around. They're relatively cheap, under twenty dollars. And essentially, all it is is you're going to insert the tube into the into the uh, fluid that you you've gotten. Pull up on the handle, which creates vacuum. It's going to draw it up in, and then you're just going to basically bend your tube, and it's just the right fit to get into that opening up there. You're going to fill that back up and you're just going to continue to do that until it gets to the point where fluid pours back out. Then you know you're ready to cap it off, start it up and get it warmed up. So as you can hear, we've got the vehicle running. we put at least another three and a half bottles in this beside the two that got us initially started. As you can see we have some dripping. What I usually like to do is overfill a little bit and then let it drain back to the point where I get a drip every second. We're going to cap it off and then your last step is going to be to put the plug back in, but you don't have to tighten it. Drop the vehicle down on the left, put on the brake, put it in reverse, neutral, drive, one or three, two, and one, then all the way back through, back to park, put it back up in the air, and check one more time for the level. Because when you put it into drive and your different uh, modes, it's going to draw some more of that fluid out, so you may end up putting maybe you know, a quarter to half a liter back in to replace it. But once you've done that, you've set your level properly, then it's a matter of put the new fill plug back in that you got with your kit, or replace the fill plug if you haven't done the, the uh, filter change, and uh, tighten it up. Then you're set to go.
So we're at the point now. We've run it through the gears. We let our uh, drip down to the point where we knew we had a good level. Install the new plug. And at this point, we're essentially done. We've done a, uh, a transmission service. So with that new filter in place, like I said, it helps with fuel economy. It definitely adds to the life of the transmission. The fluid does break down after a while. And uh, overall, just is going to make this transmission last a lot longer and perform better. So when you're ready to do a transmission service on your D2 or your P38, just give a call to any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210. And thanks for watching.